Welcome back to the channel. I'm Patriotic Stacker, and I'm honored to have this very special guest today, Vince Wade, the president of Pine Curse, Pinehurst Coins. Welcome, Mr. Wade. Thank you, Patriotic Stacker. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you here with us. So uh, tell us a little about yourself and how you got started in the precious metals business. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I guess for me, it was all about turning a hobby into a business and, and never had the intent of, uh, intention, excuse me, of uh, cre uh, creating a business out of the hobby. But uh, after I got out of the military, I was pursuing a degree in uh, criminal justice, which I did complete and started selling things part time on eBay when I was in school. And it, it just went from there. So it's a it's a great uh, American dream story. So uh, awesome. I couldn't, couldn't be happier with the outcome. Yeah. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you, sir. And what what was uh what did you start off with? Was it like Morgan slab coins? No, no, it was it was actually American Silver Eagle. So my oh, father yeah. worked in New Jersey and we lived in Long Island and he used to ride the uh, train every single day. And somebody on that train was selling American Silver Eagles and he bought them and brought them home to me. And and I collected them uh, for for the years that uh what was it from like 86 all the way through like 95 uh and then joined the military and stopped getting the coins and then when i got out of the military somebody said hey ever hear of ebay and and that's where i went and you know when you, when you first get on ebay you start looking at things that you have you want to see what they're worth and then i started uh se selling and trading those coins and you know, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so I think it's, it's history. Yeah, it's, it's pretty comical. I remember, uh, you know, at the time, my wife and I had like $5,000 to to invest in it. And that's what we did. And and uh, I, don't, I don't know if that would be possible to still do today. But, you know, this was early on 2004. So there wasn't a lot of uh, coin dealers that were actually on eBay. And now there are so many and it's very competitive. It would be difficult for for that to happen but yeah you know i've noticed it's gotten very very competitive i guess back in the day um coin shops your local coin shops they weren't really bullion dealers they sold numismatics and and um you know slab coins uh vintage stuff and it wasn't until recently they really started carrying bullion and yes. now you you have the term bullion dealer because i right. don't think there was that many you know, uh, stackers back in the day, it was more of collectors. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I hear people say that like their local coin dealer is overpriced or this is overpriced. I don't, I don't like to, to knock anybody, you know, it's very difficult for a local coin dealer to stock bullion at a competitive price because it's a lot of money to hold that inventory. Right. And, and they have, overhead so it's it's just hard you know i mean stackers do have some success going to the pawn shops or flea markets and things like that but you know you have to be well educated right so uh to be able to buy from from those types of places because you, you need to know what you're buying is authentic right so it, it's it's very difficult to make a living in the bullion world without being online and being able to sell to the masses right yes exactly so uh next question why do you think it's important for people to stack and invest in precious metals sure uh what, what you'll find out about my the, the the way that i look at it and the way that pinehurst coins talks to our clients about it we are very conservative, right? So what, 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 I, what I like to say is it's an insurance policy, right? So yeah. you need to hedge. And, you know, there are people that do more and there are people that do less. You know, we don't give advice on, on the more. What we, we like to say is 10% of your net worth into precious metals is, is a great hedge against other things that could happen in the world, right? Uh, with that being said, it's only 10% of your net worth, right? So 
in, in all actuality, the other 90% is invested in other things, right? And I'm a true patriot. And, you know, I want the United States of America to be successful. I want the economy to be successful. But just in case it isn't, I have that 10% backing, right? We have 10% precious metals. So the way that we look at it is you put the 10% in there and then you have the other 90% invested in everything else. You want the economy to do well. You want real estate to go up. You want all these other, you know, facilities that you're investing into to thrive. But if they don't and they work in the other direction, that 10% will become worth a lot more. And, you know, you, 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 the 10% will make you a lot of money percentage wise. However, what it will do is, is make it so that you can live the same way you were living prior to that great event or uh, devastating event is what I would call it. Right. So it's a hedge. It's an insurance yeah. policy. Right. Uh, other people take yeah. it to a whole other level and they believe that buying precious metals is a great opportunity to make money. I don't like giving that advice because, you know, it's it's a very volatile market. Right. Uh, but what I can say to that, though, is we've had clients that buy a little bit of precious metals over an extended period of time. And, you know, uh, traditionally they do well. Right. Uh, if you jump all in at once then you're just trying to pick a low point and that's not easy to do. Exactly. And I agree with you. I'm also very conservative, even though I love stacking gold and silver and I buy quite a bit, probably a little over 10%, but <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm well diversified. I, I right. invest in real estate, um, metals. Right. I have my financial advisor with my IRAs. So I'm, okay. I'm well diversified. I think it's very important to, you know, have a diversified portfolio and don't put all your eggs in one basket. But right. there are some people being a YouTube um, content creator on YouTube. I get a lot of people commenting, oh, precious metals is an investment. You can make money with precious metals. I mean, you can make money with anything, but is it a traditional investment? No, it's more of a savings, a plan B, a hedge against inflation. It's it has a lot of yep. pros, but it's not a traditional investment. So I agree with you and what you yeah. and Pinehurst Coins thinks. Yeah, I mean, our 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 pitch is very con uh, confusing to people because at the end of our pitch, because again, we only say ten percent, right? So we say you buy ten percent, you bring it home with you, you store it yourself, and you hope and pray that it goes down to zero. And they look at me like, what? Why am I putting 10% of my money in this? And you're telling me to hope it goes down to zero. And I say, well, think about it. I mean, if, if precious metals go down to zero, that means everything else is doing fantastic. And your other 90% is made a ton of money. And that's ultimately what you want to have happen, right? But if it goes the other way, you're going to be just fine because you have that 10% insurance policy. Now, that is not in line with the spirit of, of a stacker. A stacker is a little bit more aggressive, right? But mm -hmm. a stacker typically is a lot more educated, right? And I don't feel comfortable telling an uneducated client to invest, you know, more than 10% into the precious metals market. Exactly. You need to understand the precious metals market and you have to understand the, the volatility and the risk that is associated with it. And then to each their own, right? Exactly. And when you think of it, 10%, say you make a hundred grand a year, that's $10,000 in precious metals. That's right. That's quite a bit of money. So, you know, right. You know, that, I think 10% is very fair. Right. But uh, so. on to the next question. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of beginners walking into your shop or buying from your eBay store or your online store. What gold or silver would you recommend for a beginner stacker collector? You know, traditionally, we always recommended the American Silver Eagle. I don't remember. Well, today it's not a bad play. But, you know, over the last few years, it's been a bad play as far as the premium, right? The premium is just way too high. So what, what we do is we analyze the, the, the product line that we have. And we're looking for the items that have the smallest percentage in spread, right? So everybody's familiar, familiar with the spot price, right? So that's what the, the, the precious metals trade for. And then you have the premium, the amount you have to pay over that spot price. And then there's the third part for us is the spread, which is the difference between the buy and the sell. We feel that, we feel that that's the most important 
aspect, right? So that you buy items that you don't lose a large percentage of when you sell them back. You want to get that tightest spread possible. And traditionally, that used to be this American Silver Eagle, and that's not the case today. Now, I would say it's a one ounce round. So just a generic one ounce round. Okay. What do you think of uh, 10 ounce bars and kilo bars? Yeah. So I, I, I like the collectible. Well, everybody always wants to get their hands on uh, larger bars, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, I look at the silver sizing me as a stacker or uh, myself as a precious metals investor, I'm going to buy the appropriate amount of one ounce coins or one ounce rounds to get a, a, a big enough position that I feel comfortable that if I needed to sell it in a hurry, I could, right? I could break it up to whatever sizing that I want. And, and then after that, I'm going to move to 100 ounce bars. And then if I still have an appetite, I'm going to move to 1,000 ounce bars. All the other denominations are are very uh, affordable, and some people are drawn to them. But I don't see any type of savings in in unless you're getting a good deal, right? And and if you're getting a good deal, that's that's perfect. But traditionally, a one ounce round in quantity is cheaper than a ten ounce bar in quantity. So, okay, interesting. Um, right. This pretty much leads into the you know, the question you just answered, but uh, there's the argument out there is all silver created equal, silver, right. gold created equal. Um, some true stackers, you know, don't care what they get as long as it's spot price or a few cents over spot. I'm yep. sure you have guys walking in your shot. Hey, a shop, you know, hey, you got anything for melt, you know? Yeah. Um, and then some stackers like to have that extra value, that, that more premium piece like government backed coins. Sure. Um, what, what do you think? Do you think all silver is created equal? Do you think some silver is better than others? Some gold's better than others? Well, uh, what do you, uh, what do you think on that? So I don't believe all silver and gold is created equal, right? So I understand the point though. So it, it all points back to the spread, right? So, uh, if you're buying a one ounce piece for spot, but then when you sell it back, you're only getting 90% of the spot. And I'm, I'm just speaking in broad terms. That's not what we're paying. That's not what we're selling it for or anything like that. Exactly. Um, giving, giving a scenario, right? So again, if, if you're buying it for spot, and then you're selling it back at 10% below spot, that's a 10% spread. But then if you're buying it for spot plus five bucks, and then you're selling it back for spot plus four bucks, that's only a $1 spread, right? So it, it, it's, it's all predicated on the buying and selling aspect. Now, I've, I've had this discussion numerous times, and there is no right answer. So some people believe they want to buy as much silver as they can at spot. And what their argument would be, as silver rises, the premiums typically shrink. So. Yeah, exactly. So on their side, it's a good play. Yeah. Um, also, so for stackers out there and collectors, you know, we're dealing with a lot of, lot of money, right? And gold and silver. How should one protect and store their precious metals? So... Our advice is to take physical delivery of whatever you purchase, right? Now, that isn't always possible. Some people purchase so much precious metals that storage becomes an issue, right? So then you're going to have to use a third-party storage facility. And, you know, you, you need to make sure you do your research on that one, right? So there's a, a ton of horror stories that go along with that, right? So... You, you, you need to make sure that you do your due diligence. Exactly. A lot of people in the community are, they have the whole motto, if you don't own it, you don't, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, right? Right. So a lot of guys, including myself, I'm not a fan of safety and deposit boxes. I'm not a fan of um, vault, storing vaults. And not only that, you're paying for that. You are, so, correct. And if you're not paying for that, then I'd be very weary of some type of silver. <laughs> or, you know, it's just, it, it is what it is. So, yes, I, it, I guess it depends on the person. Me personally, I invested in a very good safe, um, a TL30. Okay. Which are very, 
very big, heavy saves. <laughs> but um, what I found in the past is when someone tells me they have a safe, they actually don't, right? But you hit on that uh, uh, right uh, right off the bat. You said TL30. That's a safe. Uh, yeah. Most people buy personal storage devices and believe that they're safes, and they're not, right? So exactly, they're uh, what are they called? S security cabinets. They are security cabinets. There's yeah. a whole there's a whole bunch of different lines of them. Even like the word gun safe is not really a safe. I mean, it's a again personal security device. I mean, uh, exactly. it might be fire rated and great for that, but most of those uh security uh devices can be flipped onto their back and open with a crowbar in like 10 seconds so oh yeah they're not so so pretty much if you're going to store your metals at home get a, either a tl15 or a tl30 safe <laughs> right right um and, and and more importantly you need to follow whatever your insurance company tells you right because if there was an yeah. issue they're, they're the ones that are going to uh refund you the money or reimburse you for your loss right so that's the important thing you don't have to go overboard you need to meet the insurance policy requirements exactly and a big thing with me is layered security so yeah. cameras alarm systems anything that could you know act as a deterrent i have four little children if someone busted in my house and seen my kids they'd probably run so you know all that stuff helps <laughs> And uh, I, think, I think the best part of the best piece of security you can do is not allow anybody to know what you have. Right. So that's exactly. that's right? that, you know, that's the best security. But unfortunately, you know, on YouTube showing metals. So I try to take, you know, security in other ways by not showing my, you know, showing my face much. Um, right. You know, addresses. I always use P.O. Box. So certain right. things, you know we as content creators do to try to stay away from the bad people, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Now you kind of already answered uh, this question, but uh, let's put it instead of like 10% in ounces, how many ounces you think is good? Um, how many people, how many ounces of silver should you own and how many ounces of gold should you own? If you had to put it in ounces, um, what's a good base? That's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, yeah. What I would say is 10% of your net worth. So everybody would be different, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. That's very size, true. Sizing is uh, predicated on the individual, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then also appetite for, for the metal. I mean, some, some of us just love the product. I mean, I remember the first oh. time I got my, my first 100-ounce bar. I mean, uh, some of us just have the bug. So... I, and some of us could care less about the product, so uh, but they're interested in the insurance policy. So again, individual sizing is what my answer would be on that one. Yes, oh, I and I have the bug, by the way, big time. Yes. <laughs> so uh, recently, premiums on silver and gold have been dropping, especially on ninety percent junk silver and American silver eagles. Why are the premiums dropping, especially after these long three long years of? high premiums on 90% in American Silver Eagles. Yeah, I think, you know, the 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 ability for the U.S. Mint to produce the American Silver Eagle is coming around a little bit, right? So, you know, on, on previous interviews, we, we talked about why they're not able to produce as many coins as they used to, and it's actually uh, plant ship production, right? So uh, they're using planche and production time to produce other types of planchets that that and that time could be used for silver eagles i mean the morgan and peace dollar deal that was just done you know where four hundred thousand proofs of each i mean those all could have been silver eagles right and and yes i know the the planchet size is different i i get all that but what what, what i'm saying here is again the same manufacturer that's producing that planchet specific for the Morgan and Peace dollar could be making Silver Eagle planchets, and they're not, right? And if we really want to get in the weeds, it's not a one-to-one -one exchange because the the Silver Eagle planchet is probably, we could probably make more than one for every one of the Morgan and Peace that we're doing since it's a different sizing, right? 
you know, the manufacturers are used to making the, uh, the American Silver Eagle plan shit. So that's a good driving force right now that those programs are, are not taking away from, from the planchet supply, which is making the Silver Eagle readily, uh, readily more available, which has driven the price premium down for the Silver Eagle. And then we're seeing that affect all different other, all the other product lines because people aren't going after those products anymore because they couldn't get the silver eagle at the appropriate price right so i think that's what we're seeing there and and that's a a a good way to look at it and uh you know what 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 i believe is at some point it's going to it's going to start to go up i mean again cuz there's the the 90% when I first started in this industry, 90% used to trade below spot, right? We would sell it retail for just about spot, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, and 90% is a, a, I call it, a, used to call it uh, the duct tape of the, the, the bullion world because it fit everybody's scenario. It, you could break it down to a very small denomination. It was fairly inexpensive to the spot price. And, and, and it could be used as, you know, money if silver was worth zero. So it was the duct tape. And I think other people felt that way also and really went after it, too. And that's really what drove the, the, the price up. So we're, we're seeing some stabilization right now, which is a good thing, I believe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I stopped buying Silver Eagles about two years ago and started stacking maples because of the premiums yes. on Eagles. Yep. And now I'm back on the Eagle game. You know, uh, I'm seeing premiums below six dollars over spot in between six to four. Um, yep. Some places even high threes over spot. And Correct. it's amazing. You know, we haven't seen Eagles like that. The most liquid bullion coin in the world. And right. uh I'm working on a monster box now, you know, on my second yeah. monster box because I, I, I love them and I'm happy to see the premiums drop for once. Um, um, and also on 90%. Um, so we all know the last three years of premiums have gone crazy with 90%. I mean, at some points it was about the same price as an Eagle. They were going for 35 an ounce. Yes. Um, and now we're seeing 90% at 18X, 19X. And to some, that's still expensive, you know, especially for the, you know, when I started stacking or getting it almost at spot or at spot and many others. But now, you know, we've seen this dip where, where it was, it was, you know, 24X, 25X. Do you right. think now is a good time to start buying 90% um, and American Silver Eagles? And you know, the thing with 90% also, they don't make it anymore. So I think... I like to say you're killing two birds with one stone because you're getting that bullion, you're adding the weight, and you're also getting that chance to add numismatic, future numismatic coins because they don't make it anymore. Yeah, I mean, on the premium side of things, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the bottom, right? But I mm -hmm. think the upside definitely, and again, this is not about the silver price that I'm discussing. What I'm discussing is the premium. I believe that the upside far outweighs the downside on the premiums right now, right? So, I mean, what could a Silver Eagle drop? It, it really, you know, could it drop another buck? I mean, now you're you're getting into the price point of, of what it costs to produce it or or for the eight, AP to actually purchase it. So I, I don't think that there's much more downside available on the premium. So I would say it's a safe play there. Uh, or, or I well, not necessarily safe, but a a a, 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 a good way to play. Play, right? So a, be, a better play than the other products, right? So, yeah. but again, that, that doesn't mean that when you buy it today, silver can't go down to five dollars. I mean, that's possible. But what I'm saying is, I don't see a lot more downside for the premium. Exactly. Um. So this is one of the last questions here. We have one more question after this. Sure. Do you think silver and gold is undervalued? Is thirty dollars silver and one thousand nine hundred fifty dollars gold a bargain? Hmm. Is thirty dollars silver a bargain? Yeah. Well, I, I've bought plenty of silver at thirty dollars, right? So yeah, 
I think for the long term, yes, it is a bargain, right? So uh, today, not a bargain. Right? Not today. Not today. I'm just, you know, averaging it out. Since I've yeah. wrote these notes, it's it went from like 23 down to 22. Right. So I just I, when we give when we give advice on how to buy silver, we say that the most important thing to do is to buy it on a schedule if your schedule is once a week once a month once a year once every two months whatever it is stick to it don't don't worry about the price so much i mean you're going to drive yourself nuts trying to say is it a good opportunity to buy or is it a good opportunity to sell right we 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 are involved in this hobby because we love it right and again if you're buying you know once a week Sometimes you're going to buy it high. Sometimes you're going to buy it low, but your average cost should be a success over the years. Right. So that's that's what we're going for here. Uh, and and that's the piece of advice that I would give is to buy a buy a little over a long period of time. So exactly. Dollar cost averaging. That's exactly right. And then obviously you need to you need to take into consideration the appropriate quantity to buy at a time for pricing based on uh, discounting for quantity, right? So to each their own, you have to figure out what works best for you. Exactly, and at a, depending on the month, what's the better buy? If gold's the better buy, if silver's sure. the better buy, what, what's better off? Should I get uh, three tubes of American Silver Eagles or should I get a one ounce gold American Eagle? Right. Um, which one has the lower premium? What, you know, what am I willing to spend? So- uh, a piece of advice we give others too is or, or give our clients is if you're going to buy gold you have to be willing to buy a one ounce piece or larger right so exactly. when you look at the smaller denominational on gold great products i love them i mean but they're collectibles it's it's you know it, it's the premium is quite high on on those particular items some people that are stackers just want to own a little bit of gold and and that's fine also but you know please keep in mind that the premium is high so yeah i think for like every say 10 one if you buy 10 one tenth gold coins um 10 eagle uh, one tenth gold eagles and you buy a one ounce gold eagle so that's both one ounces the one ounce gold eagle right now you might spend two thousand while the right. one tenth you might be spending 2250 so yeah, there's, there's definitely a premium yeah there's a premium there but you know it's but, but again, when you sell them back, you do get a premium, but exactly. the, the spread between the buy and the sell on the one tenth is quite larger than it is on the one ounce, right? So yeah. one, the, the most highly traded gold is, is going to be the one ounce gold eagle. It's going to have the smallest spread. So, yes. And, and I, as a gold stacker, I stack, I prefer my one ounce gold coins. I, I, I lean towards uh, eagles and buffaloes. Um, right. Once in a while, I'll buy some fractional gold. You know, I do like the one tenth size when you fill up tubes of the one tenth coins right. or, you know, it's nothing better than having, you know, a little tube full of gold. Right. right. But uh, again, that's personal preference. I mean, we yeah. on, only, you know, what makes it makes it tick. Right. I, 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 I enjoy all the products and, and I get that. Right. But again, when we talk about traditional stacking. And then the, when, when we're all really a hybrid of that, right? We're, we're yeah. something between a stacker and a collector, right? And yeah. some people are, well, they'll just say, I'm a true stacker. I just want the most amount of gold or silver that I can get at the lowest possible premium. And I don't argue it, right? So, I mean, it's it's whatever whatever you enjoy, right? So exactly. if you don't enjoy it, then why are we doing it, right? Yeah. Now for gold. One ounce bars, do you, do you recommend one ounce bars or one ounce coins? What, you know, what? for me, my go-to product on gold is the one ounce American uh, Eagle. So Exactly. I agree with you. Some, some people like the Buffalo. I, I'm not against the Buffalo. Uh, the Buffalo is pretty close. But the Eagle, again, trades. It has the, the, the smallest spread. Uh, and then there's tax implications that we could talk about. and But... I mean the the gold and the gold eagle, the gold buffalo. We don't fall into the ten ninety nine issues that we fall into with the uh, the one ounce bars, right? But some people love the bars. Some people like to buy kilo bars. Uh, it's all it's all what you enjoy. So exactly, I prefer the eagles and buffaloes myself. Yes. So uh, 
This is the last question for you, Vince. Sure. Tell the community about Pinehurst and where they can buy metals with Pinehurst. I know you have an e uh, eBay store and you also have a, a brick and mortar store too, right? Yes, we have a brick and mortar store. We allow the public to come in here and visit with us. Uh, we don't have items. So I believe we have uh, three private transaction rooms and you can meet with a trader and discuss the metals and actually get a brief overview on the different products, view the products. And then you can also visit us at pinehurstcoins.com. And, and we also sell on eBay. Very cool. And, and we're on walmart.com now too. So. Walmart? Oh, no. wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They sell a lot of things at Walmart, huh? Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know that, right? No, and I didn't my know that. advice for the stackers is our website pricing uh, changes every, I don't know, one every minute or five minutes. It's pretty robust. It changes quickly, right? So I'm going to give you a little trick to the trade here. Uh, the API connection between our website and eBay or API connection between us and Walmart, they don't allow us to change the pricing as quickly. So if I was to buy precious metals, I would pull them both up and go with whoever one's cheaper. So, uh, yeah. some, sometimes it's all about timing, right? You know, silver might've went up a buck, but the, the correction hasn't taken place on eBay or Walmart, right? And vice versa, silver might have went down a buck and the price on Walmart and eBay might be higher than it is at Pinehurst Coins. So there you go. You know what? And Pinehurst Coins, you guys are great. I bought in quite a bit off you guys. Um, one of my favorite bullion dealers, you guys are definitely on the top there. Um, your prices, customer service, the shipping. It's awesome. And I like how you have an eBay store. I like how you have a website. And I like you have you have a, a brick and mortar store if someone wants to come and you know Absolutely. see it in person or deal with you in person. And uh, next time I'm in North Carolina, I'm gonna swing by and uh, check you guys out. We'd love to have you. We we love meeting our uh, long term customers in person. So. And Pioneers is a great great golf destination. So please oh, come. Yeah, yeah exactly. How, how far? Where, where where exactly is it in Pinehurst again? Uh, uh where's that uh? What Pinehurst. Is, so Pinehurst is the town, and is Pinehurst town. number two is where they play the U.S. Open for the the men's golf. And our our location is about one mile from the first hole on that golf course. So, uh, wow. yeah. So we're we're very close. That's awesome. Well, Vince, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, guys, also check out Pinehurst YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. I'll throw the link and I'll also throw the link to their website, um, their eBay store, and uh, their address to their uh, local coin shop. Um, thanks again, Vince Wade, for coming on. You guys are great and I will be shopping with you guys for many more years to come. All right. Thanks, Patriotic Stocker. We, we, we truly uh, enjoyed being here today and uh, love the content. So please keep it Thank up. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you later, Vince. Take care. Take care. Bye.